What up, tribe? It's your girl, Raji, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast, The Kush Concierge, Something for the People, where the evolved hustlers come to learn more about hoodoo, tarot, culture, astrology, and everything in between. If you're new here, thanks for tapping in, and I hope you guys decide to subscribe and continue to support the journey to Kush and to my OGs, you know I love you so and I appreciate y'all so much for continuing to engage and share the content as well. Now, if you guys need me, I do have openings for spiritual readings and services as well as select spiritual supplies that are curated in-house. We are still working on the website, but for the most part, the general stuff is there for your for your journey so you know just click the link in my bio and if it is not on my website nine times out of ten i have it available on my amazon list uh which is my amazon storefront so check it out if you need if you need it and if you're unsure of what to book if what to purchase for your journey if you even need to purchase anything you know just hit me up like click the contact button i have a chat button and if you want to email me or text me you could do so and i can kind of guide you to the right place person or thing you know if it's not available under our particular umbrella right but yeah, and um, yo, so the podcast and the visuals are up from yesterday, so make sure y'all check that out if you missed that. We are about to enter a very interesting space in terms of the mission and the purpose of pretty much what I've decided to do out here. Um, what I've been called to do, not even decide, well, I answered the call, so I guess you want to get technical. Um, but we interested, we entering a very interesting space. We are about to, we're on the hymns of a lunar eclipse in Pisces, followed by the full moon and Aries that happens like the very next day. So I just want you guys to know. And the full moon happens at two, three, four. So you're gonna be, and the reason there, like, it's between Pisces and Aries. And I, you know, I like this energy because it's like tapping into your dreams, right? Or the, what you have imagined or downloaded all this time after you've gone through this series of rebirths and et cetera, right? So. You move from that Pisces energy, strategizing, getting everything together from the 4D and the 5D and pulling it into the full moon in Aries, which happens on Wednesday. And like I say, it happens at 2, 3, 4. And if you know me, you know I'm into numerology. Um, I do believe that the gods and goddesses, etc., our spirit team, I'm just going to say spirit team, so I ain't got to go down the whole lease. No shade, all tea. Our spirit team be sending us like little gems. So when I see certain numbers, like the sign's going to show up in different ways if you're paying attention, if you're well versed, right? So I'm like, how crazy ironic, not like crazy, crazy, but like ironic is it that you go from this energy of being in Pisces, right? Which rules the feet. And then moving into Aries, which rules the head, new starts, new beginnings. So you're walking into your dream life. You're walking into your newer, higher self, right? And you're, you, you've you attracted and you've released. You've decided and now you're getting ready to harvest. Now, harvest season officially is on the 22nd. We'll be pre- preparing probably between the 21st. I'm going to try to have everything that is needed for the concierge and our Patreons up by like the 21st, maybe before that, so you can get started. Now it's all got 10 before that. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I have a little like plan or whatever because if you are building anything creative wise if you are an entrepreneur if you just have a simple goal in life you'll know that we are here in the evolved hustle sessions we're moving with the seasons like our indigenous ancestors right 
So as you move with the seasons, you realize that it's going to be harvest season. And if you check out a lot of like indigenous culture, they are all month at different times. I don't think it's a specific like date, like certain tribes have certain times when they have what they call the corn festival and the corn festival is somewhat like their hour and let me stop excluding us for one <laughs> the corn festival is like the indigenous new year so you're harvesting reaping the rewards getting ready to chill getting ready to do what you do for the foreseeable future um uh, but let me give you some more info on that but they have it all over the south and like i say it's certain like tribes do it different times like they have enterprise they have just it's called the green corn festival and a lot of this has to do with like i said harvest season so tap into that because it is something that was held a festival that was held by many southeastern woodland tribes which is okay in our particular arena but a lot of people will do them um late july or june just depends a lot of people have even like i'm I wanted to get a little bit closer to harvest season so i decided that the kush concierge would do it at the end right like the very end of summer to kind of bring it in and what it is is the green corn ceremony is a celebration representing new beginnings um it's also referred to the great as the great peace ceremony which is for the first fruits of the harvest and as a new year festival as well so you would find more so the muskogee and southeastern cultures um celebrating these particular teens um creek woodland southeastern tribes now if you're wondering what that does include it's it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot the there's quite a few quite a freaking few it's a long ass list bro a long list a long long as i'm looking at it the list is quite expensive so what i'm gonna have y'all do is i'm just gonna have you look up indigenous peoples of the southeastern woodlands you know and go from there but yeah i've decided to focus in on this last period so i'll be posting a lot of information um a lot and it's perfect to me this is the perfect time for us to do it you know if you're part of the Kush concierge this is the first perfect time for us to do it because like we write at the end and like i said a lot of tribes are picking and choosing um when during this time period they'll do it so everybody don't celebrate at the same time okay okay now um yeah i'll be posting more stuff so make sure y'all tap into patreon um obviously if you're on the free tier as a member you still gotta join but it's free you'll be there'll be blogs there'll be information that you can look at and you know put into your practice for this week like i'm working on a lot to be available to you make sure y'all join the list uh email list as well because some things as far as like sales different just promotions or rituals stuff like that are going to be put exclusively to the email list what else what 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 well, let's look at the current plans for today as i have veered off so you know saturday ruled by saturn and okay so as I like dug deeper into my research and stuff like that, I know I've, I've kind of been on the fence about how much as we forge this new path, as we, you know, develop this tribe called Kush, how do we balance the idea of 
Greek Roman culture into Egyptian culture culture into you know etc. So because clearly we're in society we operate within the three D realm. Um, a lot of us, if you're gifted, you you know you move between you know say if you don't still. Even if you wanted to tap back into your indigenous culture, the way that the vast majority of society operates is through Greek, ancient Greek mythology culture. So we have to kind of know and utilize and transmute that energy somewhat for it to work for our highest good. So I was kind of like, damn, so... <laughs> How are we going to continue to do the days of the week, you know? But over time, as everything evolves, so has practices. And I feel like that's generally what I had to come to terms with this past week because I was doing like a little bit of my research and my learning. Like Egyptian culture was synchronized through Greek culture and then Greek was absorbed by Roman culture and, you know, so on and so forth. So it's kind of transcended even if you think of atrs african traditional religions they have been synchronized through catholic um religion like so we are going to likely continue with the days of the week because i was like damn should i should not should i how, how does this go you know what i'm saying but i feel like we we gotta just make it work for us basically <laughs> make work for us like every other you know generation and time span has so that's what we gonna do so saturn is the what is this who is saturn saturn is chronos saturn is time seasons so at the end of a season the end of time we are, <laughs> uh, it sucks when you be like, want to go like deep as fuck with some shit, but then you like still got to keep it like surface level. So I'm just like, okay, what the fuck? Okay. Anyway, not to make, look, make a long story motherfucker short today. Cause you know, we got all day, but we ain't got all day. Saturn, daddy, Saturn, Kronos, et cetera. That's what we working with today. Wisdom, patience, bindings, endings, grief, um, Tapping into your elevated ancestors and um, uncrossing yourself, um, removals, protection work as well today. So any of that type of work is going to be favorable today. And I let me just also say this. Hell, they had to get it from somewhere, even if they didn't like synchronize it. Because um, some stuff did kind of evolve into things that certain like people wanted to do. Or, but a lot of shit kind of trickled down. So as I continue to go on that journey of research, I feel led to say they got this shit from somewhere, right? So, okay, we need what it is. But yeah, we, we on Saturn time today. Long, long story short. <laughs> and how many days are we out from the full moon? Are we officially three days out? Y'all have been deep in my research bag. Tuesday, Wednesday, one, two, three, four. But by tomorrow, we'll be exactly three days out. So today is a good day to release and let go of everything that can't come with you. Um, and in terms of can't, I mean, ultimately, you decide. You decide if you want to move forward. You decide how you want to do this shit. You decide if it's worth the journey. But if you feel any type of resistance, my advice is let that shit go, let it flow, or, you know, start to make plans to shift. Before I get started on the um, Astro Seek chart for today, I do want to let y'all know I found a neat, neat, neat activity with ChatGPT that is good for timeline jumping, eclipse energy that we're finna go in. Um on i I ran across it on tiktok which we do most things because the spread of information is amazing on that app um but so you feed them the prompt on normal chat gpt not none of the other apps of what you want your dream life to look like 
and you go step by step in terms of how long it would take you what it looks like you may even want to put your birthday in there and like the time you were born it will analyze if this dream life is in like alignment it will give you you can ask for a schedule you can ask to assist you with assisting your children um, based on their likes their birthday things of that nature something i didn't know about chat gpt is it learns you i didn't know that so I, I I just felt like it was like a search engine type deal, like AI type searches, but it learned you. So the more stuff you put in chat GPT and you ask it questions, it will like, you don't got to keep putting that information in. But anyway, I put it step by step on my Twitter, like, um, and I'm again, and I times out of 10, I'm going to put that shit on Patreon too. And I'm going to put it under the free version, obviously, because whatever. Um, but I want to like, type it out i don't want to run down it like as i'm talking um but i'm gonna give you like step by step the prompts that i use and that like some stuff i added in on my own and then some stuff like she the girl which i'm sure i it's that's not the first time i saw somebody say that but it was the first time that i actually took it seriously and said okay fuck it let me do it let me try it out when i tell you it was the coolest shit because what you come to realize is like just like with your your birth chart a lot of this shit you on your way to doing anyway you just are a few short steps of short you know short of getting where you trying to go maybe you need a road map maybe you need some more guidance and it helps you kind of break past that creative blockage and do that and i know we've been working with artistic blockages creative blockages entrepreneurial blockages like we've been working through that and to me, Chat GPT is one of, which I'm sure there are more, I'm, I just spoke with that right now, one of the more perfect tools to do that. Now, a lot of people is kind of afraid of AI. A lot of people are wary, like, oh, I don't want to deep dive into that. Here's my deal about AI. You can use it as a tool and as an assistant. You can outsource basically i've seen people get on there and say like i was reading in the comments they was like oh i go to them for therapy i go to it like it's all different types of prompts you could just talk to it and build from it um now when you're in the creative sector of the world obviously you still want to retain some sort of authenticity in your craft in your journey writing making shit etc I say use it as like a baseline, an assistant. And just like you do with any other type of like advice, you build on it. Just like when you research, um, you research things in the library and you research for papers and things that you're doing in business, you can ask to make your business plan. You can ask it to do a lot of shit. And you go in and you add your personal touches to it to make it your own but like i said if you have fed chat gpt enough information over time about yourself it'll build it based on who you are like what you done put in so i'm gonna say be as intricate as possible i'm gonna say be as detailed and intricate and be honest with yourself about the life you want to live and what you want to do and i tell you i kid you not that shit will build it out for you like based on your ideals so it's like google on fucking steroids is how i can describe it now we moving into the age of aquarius i mean well pluto and aquarius change transformation generation etc right you might as well get on get on good foot now. <laughs> one 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 is I say that shit on the time stamp. You might as well, you know, even if you just kind of play with it a little bit, you know, see where you at. You might not feel comfortable telling it each and everything. Um, but I'm telling you, I, I did it and I did it for my child's schedule and I was like, what the fuck? Because it made sense. It it just it sounded right. In <laughs> my most southern voice, like, because I fed it the prompts and I was real and I was honest and I about what I wanted and it mapped me out a timeline, uh, a goals like it was realistic as fuck. Like I was like, wow, I love it. So tap in, man, check it out. 
do what you will. If you need, um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do the step-by-step sort of prompts I use. You can add in your own prompts, you know, what suits your life and go from there, you know? I feel like that kind of help with people who have, like, blockages to, like, I don't know. I just feel that way. I'm going to say check it out. Okay. Now for rubble on. Okay, so we got the sun in Virgo squaring Jupiter in Gemini as it was already doing <laughs> the other day. Um, Hold on. I might have to turn it in. I'm on my iPad today, not my computer, y'all. And these little Google eggs. Okay, y'all had to flip it so I could see. So we still dealing with quite a bit of retrograde energy. So quite a bit review, quite a bit of looking, getting it together. Um, the moon is first quarter in Aquarius right now. So creating new timelines, balancing things out, deciding how we want to make our first steps into this new like frequency that we're trying to go into or that we've been kind of working towards basically this whole year like i told y'all before a lot of this was like pop quiz type shit <laughs> you know and now you're like implementing things um but if you're doing it right i promise you down to your nate your birth chart and the chat gpt experiment type deal right you will realize that if you kind of already start tapping into who your higher self is, a lot of it is just minor adjustments, scheduling, shit like that. For real, for real. Give you like a roadmap. But anyway, so, yo, um, I don't know how I got off on that right quick, but somehow, some way I got there. <laughs> oh, oh, Aquarius energy. I was like talking about that. I don't know how I ended up there. Anyway. Anyway, the sun is squaring Jupiter and Gemini at two degrees. Maybe that's why. <laughs> little mad just all over the motherfucking place. So bear with me. Be patient with me. Okay. Um. So, yeah, getting organized, uh, tapping in, getting confident about your thoughts and your intellect and what you want, you know, expanding that and finding that balance. And even with the two degrees, finding that almost like that patience to really see the mission through, you know. So the sun in Virgo is kind of nobody really wants to deal with that right now. But it's necessary. The sun in Virgo is also opposing Saturn in Pisces at six degrees, which is retrograding at this point. Um, there's a little bit of hostility, which it was. This was what it was yesterday. Then the sun in Virgo is trining Uranus and Taurus at four degrees. Saturn and Uranus are among the oldest of the energies. Now, the sun in Virgo is opposing Neptune in Pisces, retrograde at six degrees. The sun in Virgo is trining Pluto in Capricorn at seven degrees. Endings. Supporting of the endings. Supporting of the commitments to incite a form of change that is needed for the long term. Not necessarily want to deal with those deep buried like feelings not necessarily wanting to deal with like karma and like reaping what you sow in terms but I feel like Saturn is the perfect place to tap in when you think of harvest season like for real for real now what else we got here? The moon in Aquarius is Canute's Mercury in Virgo. Canute's Mars in Cancer at zero degrees. Virgo was two degrees with the previous line with Mercury. Trining Uranus in Taurus at eight degrees and conjuncting Pluto in Capricorn is six degrees. Hmm. Mm, feelings deepness past there's giving you that subconscious pull to mellow shit out so that you can 
be more passionate about the life you're building and like a personal life with that cancer energy. Preparing you for this long haul with Uranus and Taurus, making it comfortable, making sure it feels right to you. Um, and that conjunction with Pluto and Capricorn, again, six degrees, giving you the balance and the harmony you need. And that's going to come through removal of things that don't serve you. Mercury in Virgo is sextile Mars in Cancer at two degrees. It is opposing Saturn in Pisces retrograde at six degrees. So how you think, how you talk, your actions, the speed at which you do things is having a moment with whether or not you feel like the work is worth it on a deeper level. You know, is this satisfying me spiritually, internally, rather than just on a physical plane? You've got what you need to do the work itself, but does it support who you are internally when no one's watching? Y'all know this is my favorite theme with Saturn and Pisces. Venus and we Libra. Yeah, Venus in Libra is trining Jupiter and Gemini at zero degrees, two air signs on the move, social, saying what they feel, keeping it cute. Please do, because <laughs> it's going to stick. Jupiter in Gemini is squaring Saturn in Pisces, retrograde at four degrees. Um, again, there's a little bit of minor conflict with the idea that you can build what you want or have that desire come out into the physical plane. So there's a little bit of a challenge with can I have it? And that's why maybe I suggested that chat GPT prompt because like for a lot of us that are like, I want this, but how do I get to this space? You know what I'm saying? Um, and not only, you know, obviously you're getting spiritual guidance, but like in the idea of being able to put pen to paper or like technology wise typing it in and a lot of another important step with that prompt is to use that, you know, I ask for affirmations to support that lifestyle. You know, you want to timeline jump with the lunar eclipse in Pisces like I'm gonna definitely give a rundown but this is gonna remove that blockage and you know almost helping you see that this shit is possible when it creates that storyline for you these little blockages that we're dealing with um in the transits that would generally kind of throw you off a little I feel like programs like that help you push on through right mm. I mean, I for one feel a little bit more, I'm like confident because I'm like, I was like, damn, okay, I'm doing this shit, like most of it already. And, you know, just a little tweak here or there, you know, but it gave me foundation. It gave me like substance. And when it tells you the story of how your day goes and you be like, damn, okay, that's doable. But you're supposed to keep that information, you know, keep it in your files, keep it in your notes. And read it and manifest and, you know, do what you do with that shit. And I promise you, uh, what is the lady, what she was saying, that your subconscious can't tell the difference between if you are joking or if you're being sarcastic or if you believe it or not. That's why you got to watch what you say and watch what you think. So imagine feeding yourself internally and subconsciously your dream life, right? Okay. And doing that shit every day and realizing that you're on a plan, skate for it and pushing on through. I thought it was genius. I don't know who came up with that, but whoever they are, they need some type of little notoriety because it's been floating around. Like I said, I just, I ain't gonna lie to you, like I use ChatGPT for certain things, but they are expanding my mind on what, you know, it could be utilized for. 
So I was like, mm, okay, I like that. I like that. Anyway, Uranus in Taurus, sextile Neptune in Pisces, one degree. So yeah, that's in direct correlation to almost what I was just saying, assisting you in bringing your dreams to a reality for the future landscape of your life, like developing a steady plan along the way with that Taurus energy. You know, Neptune in Pisces is sextile Pluto in Capricorn at one degree. The nodes themselves are in Aries and one, two, three on the timestamp for anybody that want to catch a ting. Hold on, y'all. Y'all know I got to do my screen shot so I don't forget when I be posting. <laughs> but, yeah, um... Yes, I did stop. <laughs> so, let me go back down here. Chirons and the nodes and Lilith are at their usual teens. But with the nodes, there is, both of them are retrograding. Only one of them was retrograding the other day. Sec and they're in Aries, so a bit of a mind, you know, sextile the moon in what is it, Aquarius, and Canute's Mercury in Virgo, as well as squaring Mars in Cancer at one. All, all of these are in one degree, so very potent energy. The nodes um, opposing Lilith in Libra at one degree. So with the nodes being what they are, like to me, your future self and your past self is having a moment. And when I say having a moment, I mean like an internal battle of what you want versus who you were versus how you feel versus how people tell you to be. And you may, with that square Mars and Cancer, you may be getting a little resistance from what you're comfortable with in terms of your family, your peer group, relationships, etc. Especially with that Lilith and Libra. But with that sextile the moon in Aquarius and that Canute's Mercury in um, ooh, Virgo, it's showing you what you need to do to subconsciously get these things done. And, you know, with that Aquarius and Virgo energy, you're committing. You may be standing by yourself. That's the hermit in um, tarot. So you could look at that in a very real world landscape as to how the nodes are kind of shifting, you know, what from what you knew to what you want to be, right? Now, the Lilith and Libra's transit is trining the moon in aquarius at two degrees so while digging up your shadows lilith is very on top of what's fair what's right what's balanced two degrees squaring mars and cancer two degrees against like what you know not allowing you to sit in your comfort zone for shit that just doesn't work for you anymore right making you do their work Chiron and Aries, Canute's the sun in Virgo at zero degrees, opposing Venus in Virgo at two degrees, and sextile Jupiter and Gemini at two degrees. If Chiron is working with you, and that's kind of crazy because I was reading about Chiron replaced somebody, and dang, obviously, I have to go back, but replaced as the struggle. So it's a whole story behind why Chiron even appears the way it does in our birth charts or in the charts every day, period. So your inner struggles, your deepest, darkest, right? Giving you the free will to see what it is and get it out, remove it. Virgo rules the digestive system. So it's us kind of like highlighting how are you going to get to your highest space if you don't like release certain things. Then it's opposing Venus and Virgo. So whatever you were stuck and stubborn on, not wanting to work through, is making you face that shit head on. And it's also giving you the courage and the confidence to expand and to take those lessons and turn them into blessings. I love it. You know, it's work, but hey, 
was new pussy cat. You know? So matter of fact about it. So very matter of fact. Which sometimes we need that. <laughs> sometimes we gotta kinda step out of like it's no it's not giving fluff, you know. It's not giving fluff at all. You know, sometimes when you get to a certain point in the journey, obviously you want to ease yourself into it. But there are some times when you got to look yourself in the mirror and be like, all right, I'm tired of being like this. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of living for everybody else. I want to live for myself. I want to do what calls to me. I want to do what feels good and not just in like a vice type of way, but like in a this is my lifeline. I'm waking up out of this slumber of the matrix as they call it <laughs> but when you like tap into the fact that like um we've been getting fucking programmed since the beginning of the damn time and there are some of us that literally come from the lineage of prometheus and then there are some of us that come from the lineage of um Zeus and um I gotta separate in the idea of Prometheus like <laughs> in Greek culture and what that means and how Prometheus's son was the king of um Egypt and their mythology and how Prometheus came from the Oceanides, the nymphs and the pygmies and like how all that shit go like free to be to create to do artistry to do like uh trinsetta like it, it just it checks out man and you can like go so far back and see where that shit literally checks out like who's who what's what why things are the way they are you know down to religion it, just, it goes all the way back but the trillish shit is realizing that nothing stays the same and the more that they try to make it like fit the narrative and stay the same the more there's going to be resistance and i feel like the resistance is coming with this pluto and aquarius which at the end of the day you know if it's not evolving it's dead so is the culture dead is you know what i'm saying is society dead no there are change makers there are people that just now want to live for them nobody like People don't want to be a part of, like, this restricted-ass system anymore. Like, and you'll see more and more people that are like, mm, I don't think I want to live like that no more. And it, it don't have nothing to do with your race or your socioeconomic status. Some people just want ready to get off the fucking hamster wheel, you know? There are some people, you know, what where it does coincide, you know, I'm not diminishing that that pipe, that struggle at all, because it is there and it does make a difference. But in general, where to me, if I was to be like, where did the gods like kind of fuck up a little bit? <laughs> eee, no blasphemy. You know what I'm saying? Don't judge me. If I was to um, let me see, how can I word this? If I was to be like, damn, where they lost touch with society. Ooh, that's a good one. That's more respectful. Where they lost touch with society is not realizing it. Nothing is for certain. Nothing stays the same. People are not going to want to live the same way under the same doctrine. And where it worked for a little while, it's just not working anymore. Um, and that that's a cultural thing. That's a generational thing. It's, you know, it is not what it was on all landscapes at first. It was solely a, you know, gender, uh, you know, um, a race thing. It was that at first where they could be like, oh, you this, you that. But now that shit trickling down into the money team. And money don't have a motherfucking color. Money do not have a color at all. Socioeconomics, like the middle class is disappearing. It's damn near obsolete. You either there or you there. And people just trying to get how they live and like being so stingy with the resources and being so, you know, it's just not working anymore. 
And so it has to be a change. And it, it just, if y'all have not watched Chaos on Netflix, I'm going to definitely recommend that you do. I'm still catching up on shit on um, Preacher. I'm still catching up. Dead Boy Detectives. Um, we at the last episode. I thought we was at the last episode yesterday, but apparently we weren't. But still watching those. So I'll let y'all know. It's giving Netflix give me some fast suggestions. I ain't even gonna hold you. And how they bring the shit from other networks is kind of interesting. So I know we was kind of complaining about Netflix a little bit, but the content is solid right now. Right now, for now, they 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 seem to be pushing a message, pushing an idea. Um, and several, you know, not just like with an agenda. It's just like the information needs to be put out there. They they feel like they can escape karma by putting the information out there. So that's what they do. You can't escape karma though. You make can soften the blow. You reap what you sow though. And if like a lot of people just be sore motherfucking losers. Like people be sore losers. Period. <laughs> People be sore losers. But imagine your frequency being kept down, your money being kept down, you being born into struggle, all because a motherfucker, like, you ain't playing fair. <laughs> and I guess that's where they come up with the old adage, life ain't fair. But she, fate say different. The world card cycle is done, okay? That cycle is done. The cycle of being blind is done. So, you see now that they, they not playing fair. They never intended to play fair. They never play fair. And when I say they, I mean like the powers that be. You know, not wanting to retire. Think about all the, how they, not just on some like Zeus type shit, right? Think of it in terms of like the politicians, like Mitch McConnell. Like, he's fucking rotting away, bro. Like... They don't leave. They seat. They sit in them fucking seats till they damn near dead. What? How? What do you know about this generation? This culture? This? But the agenda is to keep shit the same. But they phasing the fuck out. Even in that realm, they phasing out. Bird confirmation. They phasing the fuck out. They have no choice. So you bring in, you know, your. The people you groomed up under you. <laughs> and that's going to be interesting. Because a lot of people, they see that this is just a performance. And I ain't trying to get political. um, You know, but I'm just drawing, you know, an example for y'all. It is what it is. You know, I don't think, I think people are not caring about red or blue i think people are just choosing themselves this season and that's quite a shock but they come from realizing that they don't give a fuck they got an agenda and that's to keep certain people in power so that they can you know what i'm saying that's the agenda may the best man win titans fucking olympians like but we never stood a chance and you know i got the most interesting download about king solomon as I was listening to some information about him randomly. Like, they say it's Key Solomon here, 700 wives, right? He asked God, okay. You know, and know thy enemy. Fuck that. I ain't saying, you know what I'm saying? But King Solomon had 700 wives, 300 concubines. However, I know 700 wives. I know 700. How the fuck you have 700 wives? But anyway, so mind you, they say he asked God, i.e. Zeus. I, you know what I'm saying? I eat Amun Ra. Like, okay. I need, I don't want riches. I'm already rich, right? I just want wisdom and knowledge. And then he go find him 700 bitches or damn near a thousand bitches. And he sends out these like birds and he taps in and he learns the ways of nature. He learns how to call spirits. He learns how to do this. But mind you, he's hunting. And the most significant, like, out of 700 wives, the most significant story comes from the Queen of Sheba, who is from Ethiopia, who is originally one of the first and oldest civilizations in the world like come on fred like the writing is on the fucking wall and so yeah 
And he did this through like aligning himself with feminine energy. Like, does nobody not realize that? And I, before our girl, you know, and I still respect her viewpoint because I still ain't read that book. But before she hit me to that love affair, air quotes, I was looking at, I had started kind of looking at Solomon kind of sideways. And the more they talk about his ass, I get it. But the more I'm like, you knew what you was doing. That's give me wisdom. Where wisdom come from? He was getting, like, he was going to each country like basically like commanding each place like and how was he doing it getting the women <laughs> i'm sure he had more tactics as well like you dealing with the gin you dealing with women you dealing with demons you dealing with angels and your common folk hmm that's that's a lot but they say that his downfall was that he just he got greedy didn't know when a lady always knows when to leave the table. A leader room, a leader party. Hey, up, you want to put it? And to me, that's like the whole consensus of now. They don't know when to leave the fucking table because they so scared they shit gonna come back on them. They so scared they gonna have to live in a world that is not fit for them. But what's crazy to me is you done all this pillaging from the beginning of time, looking for land and resources. And I was saying this yesterday on Twitter when I got irritated after reading like you done did all this shit right getting the land getting the resources whatever whatever everywhere you go you fuck it up you use it up you fuck it up now we having to rely on technology which ain't no wrong with that the systems evolved but they can't they they too over consumption to wait on the seasons like the indigenous like the ancients and they just want it quick. They want it now. They want it all. They want this. They want that. They want to implore their ideas. Not even being humble enough. And I hate the word humble for real. Not even being uh, self-aware enough to say, damn, maybe we need to like, pull back a little. You know? So they done got power hungry. And that's going to be their downfall. Mm-hmm. Overall, and when I say they, I mean the people who are keeping that that fucking wheel turning <laughs> all the way from fucking the Olympians. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All the way from the Olympians. The the people who keeping that damn wheel turning, they don't got power hunger, they don't want to give up, they don't want to give in. They doing all type of shit just to stay. And not realizing they're out of touch. And that's the downfall. Not knowing when to leave. Not realizing when you're out of touch. I could go deeper. But, you know, why not get into this reading? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Papa, for opening the roads for me as we get this guidance and this clarity from the Elevated Ancestors today in our spirit team. Thank you so much for protecting me as I go on this journey for the tribe. Thank you for the gift. You know, I don't abuse the gift. I honor it. I appreciate it. I love it. Yes. But yeah, what y'all got for us today? What we need to know, Papa? Hmm. So we got a son of coins in the reverse for the past. Present. The grandchildren. We have Aquarius energy and collective. Ace of sticks in the reverse and near future. Father of knives in the upright and overall energy is the mother of knives. So I definitely shuffle. <laughs> I keep getting now, I'm getting like a whole different vibe. So you come here on this journey to cushion. You're a part of the tribe, right? You join in the tribe. You're thinking about joining the tribe. You're getting you know, whatever, right? We are generally the black sheep of our families. We are generally the change makers, the doers, the thinkers. You know, they don't like when you think knives energy. <laughs> they don't like when you think. And I just feel like now the readings are more level going towards like our our immediate circles not being able to stop us from tapping in so that we can be a part of the change like we are about to be the guides we're the guides now because our parental some of us not all of us now some parents you know they was up 
But a lot of us are now in our like mid thirties and forties, and then you got obviously some you know mid twenties, early thirties that are you know have old souls and you know are aware. So I ain't gonna you know not include y'all as well. But it's like we reaching a point where we're gonna be the guides. We're gonna be the standard you know, how we want to live, what we want to do. And now I feel like it's coming out in the readings, this resistance that we gain from our elders and our and our not so elevated ancestors. <laughs> you know, they don't want to see shit change, you know, and I think like this is this is what it is in the read. We got the Son of Coins to the grandchildren in the upright, to the Ace of Sticks in the reverse, and we got a father of Nas in the upright and a mother of Nas in the upright. So you still got this older couple that, and then you got Kronos, the idea of Kronos and time with the clocks, with the father of Nas. Then you got the mother of Nas, this book. And if you were to see this picture, she's a part of what they call the East. And my book is not in this motherfucker. It's in my bag in my room because I was like, I'm not staying in my office all day. So I left the book. Ugh. Anyway, she's a part of the Eastern star on this picture, right? The old societies, the secret societies that help you stay afloat. And these people... They're not wanting to change. They think our plans are frivolous. They think they're misguided. And they are strategizing. They are on. They trying to figure it out. But they are so out of fucking touch. That's all I keep hearing. Like they're out of touch. Now. In the allegory or the myth, right, back way, 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 Gaia, Earth, Newt, supported, like, the children. Um. So, at some point, Gaia, Earth, Mother Earth, Mama Earth, however you want to categorize it, is alive, 5151, and is supporting the change. You see the grandchildren there. Aquarius energy heavy and the moon is in Aquarius and that Pluto in Aquarius is going to be coming up. That's what we prepping for almost, right? We're prepping. This is the prepping season. Mm. So, yeah, at some point Gaia did support um, because Kronos or Uranus or whatever, whichever one of them, every, it's like, they be eating their fucking kids, man. They don't want to shift. They don't want to give up power. They don't want to change. And this is a story as old as the damn planets. Like eating, Kronos eating the planets, not wanting to give up power, not wanting to be succeeded. And that's generally what's happening. <laughs> and that's why they so like ick with our generation. Tell me about the Son of Coins in reverse. Yeah, John Horace Aries could be significant. So, in the past, you may have felt as though your plans weren't working out and maybe you decided to give up the fight or that you were losing. Aries, clarify please. Mars is in cancer though. But... There was judgment called here. Maybe a, um, some self-actualization with the dim bones, Libra energy. You've kind of examined your losses. So you're examining your losses from the past today, right? Okay. Tell me about the Ace of Steeds in the reverse. And collectively, tribe-wise, you may not have been able to take action until you ended partnerships and relationships that didn't serve you two of baskets in reverse clarity and this could have been with a mother of sticks in reverse a sagittarius leo or aries energy mother figure okay tell me more please not to be rude and this was an energy that nine of baskets in reversed your ass like kept you in lack kept you unfocused 
didn't want your dreams to be fulfilled. Why? Because this is a toxic family. They, this is people that don't believe in passing the mantle, 10 of baskets in reverse. So now that you've realized this about these energies, right? You've done some self-assessment on why your plans weren't working. Why were you losing this fight? You know, you know that it seemed. And it's because you were being blessed with a new start. You had to develop your confidence. You had to develop strategy. But first, you had to know what the fuck was going on. Now, heavy Aries energy. So, yeah, you had to heal your emotions from these toxic family loss, instability, um, an abusive or a misguided childhood, lack of love, lack of alignment, and this gave you lack of direction, made you afraid to get started, to do what you was doing, period. You know, you weren't really aligning with anyone in your close parameters, you know. So, now that we didn't got the reverse, where, why is this grandchildren in the upright card here? Because a cycle is continuing here. What cycle is continuing with the garden card? Mother of baskets in the upright. Hmm. What's the continuous cycle? Um, clarify the mother of baskets in the upright. Son of knives in the reverse. So... You're going to have to step into your confidence... Because if you don't, the cycle will continue. You've got to be confident. You've got to have foresight. Um, funny thing about Prometheus and the fact that he's the grandfather of, according to Greek mythology, Prometheus is the grandfather of all of us, right? The ones built from clay, the ones that come out of Africa. Um, go back, look far, 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 far back. It starts with Prometheus. So anyway, who is M I fucking A? Where the fuck is Prometheus? I was wondering that yesterday. <laughs> anyway, I digress. He didn't disappear. He had children. They have lineage. They exist. And they say once he made up with Zeus and told Zeus not to have sex with or mate or make a child with one of the oceanides, which is a spirit, because that would be the child to supersede him. He disappeared. There's no more accounts of Prometheus yet. He had children. He had a wife. He had like real dog, real shit, man. Okay, pay attention. All of them coming up out of Ethiopia too. Oh, okay. So anyway, you got to get your confidence back because this cycle, you know, is going to continue. You have to tap into your emotions from a more balanced place because you don't need to do anything reckless with this sun and knives in reverse and you don't need to be thinking negative. Or it could be where this Aquarius in question, a page energy, is trying to keep a cycle going. They want this mother of baskets to move recklessly and think negatively. Clarity? Yeah, somebody wants some sort of victory here. It could be you or them. Maybe you get the victory. Tell me about these six of sticks. Hmm. It's them. They want a victory. They want to win at all costs by keeping you unstable, by trapping you with this four of sticks and reverse energy. Mm. Tell me about this father of knives in the good, right? So these older energies that are controlling things, because it's funny because this father of knives, right? Father time, Saturn, Kronos, Jupiter, etc. Right, he different from the other father of knives, which I'm just now noticing because the other father of knives, I mean, not knives, but the other fathers in the deck look like they're older, but they not old. This guy is old, they old, it's like a grandfather. He got a white beard and he got on like old time clothing, right. So this father of knives is strategizing how to control your path forward, right? Tell me about the mother of knives in the other right. What's she doing? 
someone knows that you're the empress, the big queen. Mm -hmm. Somebody knows this shit. This mother of Nas knows, like, they tell me more. Yeah, they know it and they against your ass. Nine of sticks. They know you, they know you prime to take over. You're what um our 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 sisters from another mister's um say is the supreme. You're the supreme. You're the supreme of your lineage. They do not like that shit. And therefore, nine of sticks in reverse, they are enemies to you, baby. And they're going to continue to try to cloud your judgment, continue to try to keep you seven of baskets in reverse, like all up in your feelings about them and the moves that you're making. Tell me about the four of coins. You seem to have been released, though. Uh, Father, uh, my bad, Gullah Jack in reverse, Pisces. You freed yourself. And strong, like courageously, um, strengthen the upright Leo. <clears throat> you freed yourself from these energies, from this control tactic that they were trying to do towards you. But they know exactly who you are. And that's why they stay playing in your fucking face. Tell me about the seven of baskets in reverse. Yeah, they were trying to keep you in your head. Uh, father of coins um, in reverse. See, this father of coins is younger Okay, so he's like greedy, he's a user or side masculine energy, a person you was possibly in a relationship with. So they feel like they were being very strategic. They knew you were the empress. You've had people around you that were hidden enemies that were clouding your judgment. It could have been this father of coins. Um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, masculine energy that you were in a relationship with or that you had to make some sort of decision regarding, like you had to make a decision about this energy overall. Whatever decision you made about this energy is what's the catalyst for this change. That's what I just heard. Tell me about the four of sticks in reverse. Yeah, you four of knives, they were trying to keep you unstable so you can be like not grounded in your thoughts and your moves. Tell me more. Yeah, they wanted to keep you at a loss, keep you worried about your finances, make you feel like you weren't getting no help. Here, five of coins in the reverse, clarity. And they may have done this um, nine of knives in the reverse by keeping you like planting things in bad soil um investing in the wrong things worried about the wrong fucking things um hexing cursing jinxing gossiping yeah ace of knives in the reverse definitely just keeping your ass not in your right dome because they know that you are the high priestess Ooh, and take it where it resonates. You feel me? Like genders, you know, this isn't about gender. This is about energy. Oh, that is interesting. You call judgment, though. Somebody was trying to slow you down. Somebody was trying to stop you. Your plans made in work. Maybe you felt like you couldn't fight. But let me get some clarity on this past energy. Is this a person or is this the collective spirit? Like, what's going on? Oh, it's people. Oh, shit, now. Three of coins in the reverse. Yeah, you called judgment. You decided that you no longer wanted to partner with this um, emperor in reverse, right? You began to see... Your the blinders came off the two of swords in the reverse clarity, and you saw that this person was like taking your strength here. They were energy siphoning you. Strength in reverse, uh, Leo energy clarity, please. I'm already looking at the ten of sticks. Yeah, you saw this cycle was just gonna keep going. The world card in reverse again, clarity. Yeah, this person was gonna continue to be a burden for you. You realize this. That's why you had to call judgment on this shit. He was designed out. Oh, no, you didn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I tell y'all all the time about 
I be thinking like, I, you know, I be in similar wrong energy, so I be like, okay. <sighs> I should, like, I don't have to wear, like, a head covering. So, I have been very, very slow about that. I have been super fucking slow. <laughs> I'm just a girl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, oh, my God, that was painful. That hurt. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Fuck it. And I'm not going to walk all the way to my room to get my um, scarf. I need to retwist my hair right now anyway, so feel how you feel, motherfucker. <laughs> like for real. Like stop playing with me. Uh tell me um about the present energy. You are gonna receive justice for this though. Justice in the upright. Tell me about the collective energy. Someone is all out of options. Um seven of cups. What's that? This queen of pentacles in the reverse. They're all out of options. This mother of sticks. Yeah. They are no longer able to keep it together. They are broke. Busted and fucking disgusted. So they are going to try to offer you a two of cups in the upright. They are going to try to offer you an apology. A olive branch if you will. What should we do about this olive branch spirit? It's going to lead you to the four of sticks in the reverse. Um, let me see. They want you in balance so they can take action. You, you're vibing too high right now. Your frequency is too high. Like They can't fuck with you. Not the way they used to be able to. So, they got to get you to be on a level, uh, like, take their energy in again. And if you don't, you know what I'm saying, that's going to keep them where they at. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the near future spirit. This queen of swords in the reverse. This manipulative air sign. And she knows something. Two of wands. They're going to make, they made some sort of decision here to take a leap of faith. And what's that? What is it? To stop you from working on something. Seven of Pentacles in the reverse. To try to hurt you or harm you. Again. Yeah, stop you from taking action. Knight of Wands in the reverse. Keep you stuck in your head. They're going to send a knight of wands in reverse towards you to stop you from taking action. Mom, but spirit is saying two, four, six, eight of wands in reverse. You don't have to even worry about battling this energy because you see them for who they are. They've already been exposed to you. So this is not even your fight. Like these motherfuckers just grabbing their straws. Yeah, this emperor in reverse has already been exposed to you. So you see them for what it is. This is not even like, fuck that shit, right? Yeah, spirit is saying, do not return to this person. You already know what it is. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of cups in reverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep moving forward. Um, Six of swords in the upright. Because you, this queen of um, wands in the upright, yeah, you need to be fearless about your plans um, here. But this, like, oh, they're going to keep coming towards you with that bullshit to avoid a tower. Yeah, because you're progressing rapidly, you know what I'm saying? You're progressing rapid, rapidly and they're just confused at how you're able to do this. Spirit says, do not be in regret about leaving these people behind because Page of Wands, they were going to keep you stuck and stagnant, you know, losing passion. Continue to call judgment. Yeah, obviously because of their actions, their immature as actions, judgments being called on their ass. So you ain't got nothing to be worried about. Tell me about the overall energy, please. Ooh, death. Ooh, somebody's about to pass away. 
somebody's about to go to glory or the lack thereof. When this person passes away, this is going to lead you to the five of pentacles in reverse. This is going to bring you in. This is how you're going to escape this poverty. You're going to be able to heal this trauma through this person's passing. Um, there is a loss here, though, of fail. They failed at this point. They failed. Somebody, somebody's ending is gonna what's gonna bring you out. Um, they failed at trying to at healing this generational trauma. They failed at healing something, and this lovers in the upright is the truth. They failed because you healing. You've forgotten into balance. You're going to be in balance with who you're supposed to be with. And that's going to be the justice. That's going to be the clarity that you need. Yeah, that's going to be your will of fortune. Damn, spirit loud as hell this morning. I mean, it's today. Okay, then. Tell me, um, I'm at 110. Tell me about what's the oracle got to say? What's up, oracle? What y'all got? Death again? Oh, my somebody's passing away somebody's passing away they're hiding it too they're hiding that they're either they're hiding endings or they hiding that they're about to pass away mm. tell me about the i guess we would want to know more about that huh tell me about the present though yeah, somebody is no longer inspired to be kind um, because they're too busy trying to play games. They're trying to be cunning. Mm -hmm. They haven't healed. Could be this Aquarius energy. Yeah, they can't adapt to change. Yep, transformation in reverse. They're afraid of change. They're afraid of anything new. Tell me about the collective energy. You're going to have to keep your boundaries up, Scorpio energy, when it comes to trusting people moving forward and who you're going to be trusting. Especially when it got to do with this mother of sticks, this mother figure. And I want to say this emperor energy too. Somebody's hiding though. They're going through lots of endings. Either they're going to pass away or they're going through endings. And I ain't going to get no yes or no. I'm just going to let it play or how it play out. Cause what? Tell me about the near future. Yeah, Spirit says get out of your feelings about this. Don't communicate with these people. And continue to work on yourself. Are they working on you? Yeah, continue to work on yourself and protect yourself, your family, your kids. Yeah, if you have it, your, your projects, what you're building. Ooh, confirmation. Tell me about the overall. These people are not at peace because they've lost victory in reverse. They can't stop you from creating. Um, they don't believe what they don't believe that it's over. Spirit saying somebody gotta have patience. Hold on. They're lacking peace because they've lost. They can't create because they don't believe. Continue to have patience. Their intentions are bad. Don't collaborate with them. Yeah. And spirit doesn't want you to be consumed with doing anything of substance with them. Sacred. Well, hell, you was right on point. So, I want to get a little bit more about this passing away energy before I tap out. <sighs> okay? This passing away energy. Because it came, death came out twice. Spirit, okay, this energy from the past that is hiding something. Are they hiding that they're going to pass away? Or they're just hiding that they're experiencing lots of endings? Which one is it? I'm interested. The star in reverse. It's this Aquarius. Tell me more about him. Pisces. Hangman. They're 
hiding. It's being exposed that they're stuck. They're bound to a toxic family. And they can't move forward. Knight of Cups in reverse to heal. Because they're avoiding an inevitable ending. Mm -hmm. And it seems that someone's been freed from this magic. Mm. Well, Gemini and Aquarius. Mm. All right, then. So an Aquarius is about to pass away. Nope. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You call judgment. Whatever plans they had with this emperor in reverse to come towards you, to stop you, you call judgment. You decided you weren't going to work with that person no more. That's what that was. This was all a setup. So you'll be getting some communication about something, some sort of plan that you're working on with the Page of Swords and the Knight of Pentacles. You do not need to be reckless in your thoughts. Do not be negatively thinking. Something's being exposed here um, about a Leo's plans not working out. You seem to have freed yourself from a higher fun in reverse here, a King of Cups energy in reverse. Yeah, this person was very like um, cold and fucked up and it looked like they are with a either this who is this they've lost control they broke with this high priestess in reverse this bad witch mm -hmm. yeah they're not getting a new beginning or a new start because they're of their actions their reckless actions mm -hmm. yeah there's some sort of stagnation here they're gonna try to offer you um yeah these they these people not gonna quit let me just wrap that shit up by fire you're gonna have to continue to keep your guard up with this seven of sticks and just move forward because they want to stop you from making a decision about moving on for sure uh but your ancestors and your spirit team is saying you better pay attention to the signs and synchronicities these people are going to get dealt with for the things they've done. The justice system has stepped in. Yeah. You know, you're getting justice. You've avoided a tower uh, because you're not communicating and you're not dealing with these people. And you need to not deal with them because they're going to continue to betray you. Yeah, they were going to try to keep you blind and stuck in your head while they lied and schemed. You know, so continue to detach with the Ms. Robinson. Um, a lot is being exposed um, about their plans, you know, you know, to stop you from working on whatever you're working on. They got a big issue with what you do for work or what you're doing to build your next phase of life. This is a very intricate scheme. They had the master plan. They thought they had the master plan, but this shit done blew up in their face. Mm -hmm. That's my word, y'all. Continue to keep your head on the swivel and realize that these people ain't shit, baby. Love on the bottom of the oracle. Yeah, they're going to try to trick you with love. And it's being revealed. It's being hidden that you are providing for them. And they don't want you to have a rebirth, so they're going to try to trap you. But Spirit wants you to remember that your family is happy to hunt you and play games. Um, this isn't a mystery. Stay wise. They're trying to take your strength with your energy. You're like, ooh disgusting disgusting but yo that's my word y'all um continue to stay focused and you know anybody in the past leave their ass in the past they go for a reason i don't care who the fuck it is <gasps> confirmation i don't care who it is leave their ass right down there don't say it ain't trying to tell you but yeah, I'm going to post some stuff today in regards to the eclipse, etc. Our plans for this harvest. And yeah, to make sure you keep your notifications on so you know when I drop. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I pray this message helps someone out. Tell a friend and tell a friend because you never know who can help. We will chat soon. Bye.